Hi guys and welcome to another video. So Unraid 6.10 RC3 is out now and in this video we're going to have a quick look at it and also a couple of new plugins as well. Sounds interesting? Then let's get started. So it's that exciting time again when we get to see what's new in Unraid. And at the end of last week, Unraid 6.10.0 RC3 was released. So of course we're going to be upgrading and having a look at what's new in RC3. But at about the same time that RC3 was released, we also got an awesome new plugin, a file manager plugin that was released as well. And a great update to the unassigned devices plugin that's also super useful that we're going to have a look at as well. So let's go across to my main server and log in. Okay, so if you're running an RC version of Unraid, then you're probably seeing a little message at the top of the web UI saying that 6.10.0 RC3 is now available. And we can click on update now. But as always, before updating, it's always best to make a backup of the flash drive. So scroll down to where it says boot device, click onto flash and make a backup of your flash drive. Okay, so once you've made a backup, then you're ready to upgrade. Now, if you don't see this at the top here, well, just head across to Tools here, go to Update OS, and click on Check for Updates. And so long as your Unraid branch is set to Next, then you'll be able to install this latest RC3. So I'm going to click on to Update here. Then Done. Now on the right hand side, you'll see I'm getting some notifications coming up here because various plugins are going to be automatically updated before I go ahead and reboot. So I'm going to wait for all of these to finish and once they are, the final message at the bottom will tell me that I'm ready to reboot. Okay, so there it is. So I can close these notifications, go across to the main tab and now the message here says that I can reboot. So let's do that and see what's new in RC3. So with it rebooted, let's log in. And here we are on 6.10.0 RC3. Now the first thing I want to show you about this RC3 is not actually something built into RC3 itself, but a plugin which is only supported in RC3 and up. Now about four years ago, in the feature request, many people, myself included, said it'd be really cool to have a file browser in the Unraid web UI. And now that's something that we've got. So for that, I'm going to go across to the apps tab here. And here I'm going to type file manager and install this excellent plugin here. While this is downloading, I'd just like to give a huge thanks to Bonnie NL for making this plugin. Thanks, man. Awesome work. And so now if I go across to my shares tab here and I'm going to go into my ISO share here and we can see here now we've got checkboxes down the side here and on the right here, the plus symbol which gives us various different actions. So if I go into this Linux folder here and say I want to rename this, I can just highlight it and click on rename at the bottom from the action buttons. But also, like I said, each file has a little plus icon where you can select the action so we can rename it from here as well. And obviously these action buttons on each individual file, it means you don't actually have to tick the file to do it. You can just go onto the individual file and select the action from the plus. But because I've ticked the file I want to edit, I'm going to click on to rename at the bottom. So to demonstrate this, I'm just going to remove part of the file name here. Then just click on proceed to rename the file. And obviously we can create folders. We can upload files from our desktop straight into Unraid. Now I think the uploading of files is really super useful. And we just select what we want to upload and click on to open. And at the side here, we can see the progress as the files transfer directly into the Unraid share. And we can see now that file's been uploaded. Cool. Oh, and look at this. Now, if I go back to the main share tab here, we've always been able to click on to compute size and see the size of the share. But what we can do now with the plugin is we can select individual folders, click on to calculate and see the size of the actual folder. And we can do that with multiple folders, seeing the total size of the ones that we select. I think that's really awesome. Now, another really neat thing is the actual permission button here. For instance, if we wanted to edit a file in inside a container and we found the permission wasn't correct, then it would allow us to better change that if we needed to, to be able to edit it. 
Now, one extra thing that would be really awesome is if in the future this plugin added like a little text editor. That would be really awesome. But I think this is such a good improvement to Unraid. So useful. Yeah, we could always use containers like Crusader. And yeah, they're still really useful to use anyway, even with this. But for making small little changes, deleting files, moving files and renaming them, I think this is an awesome plugin. Now, I'm sure there's some people out there thinking, well, why not just build this straight into the OS itself? Well, think about it. By using a plugin system and having the file manager as a plugin, the author can push as many updates as he likes, and we don't have to wait to the next version of Unraid to have updates to various components. And also, remember with this plugin, you can actually destroy files, you can delete them. So for new users, this could be quite dangerous. So having it as something you actually have to install can be safer for people who are new to Unraid. Okay, so moving on. Now, the next thing I'm going to show you again, it isn't something that's actually in RC3, but it came out at the same time, so I'm going to show it anyway. In the new version of Unassigned Devices, we now have a button to be able to add a root share. So just what is a root share, you might wonder? Well, about five years ago, I actually made a video about manually setting up a root share. Then last year in my moving data series, I made a video about using a root share when moving data on Unraid. So if you want to know why root shares are useful, then you can check out those videos. But now setting up a root share is just super easy. It's just as easy as clicking a button. And this is thanks to DLandon's excellent unassigned devices plugin. And again, I'd just like to take a moment to thank DLandon for the great work on this plugin. Now, like I said, to add a root share, it's really easy. You just click a button. You just click this one here, add root share. But I'm not going to actually add it on this server here. I'm going to add it on a different server because I want to show how this plugin can work with the file manager plugin. And I'm on Unraid RC2 here. This plugin isn't dependent on RC3 like the file manager plugin. And if I scroll down, hey, where's the button? Well, that's because I need to go to the plugins tab and make sure I'm on the latest version of unassigned devices. So let's update it. Great. OK, back to the main tab. And now we can see there's the button add root share. So I'm going to do that and I'm going to call it root share. Now for the mount point, we can use user, which is basically all of the unraid shares, disks, which is well, all of the unraid disks or remotes, which is all of the remote locations which are connected through unassigned devices. Well, I want it to be the shares, so I'm going to choose user and click on to add. Now, because I had a root share set up on this server the old way, I need to remove this from the SMB extras file because I can't have a share with the same name twice. So I'm going to have to stop the array. Go back to settings, SMB, and I'm going to remove this custom root share that I had put in using the old method. OK, so now I'm going to click done, back to the main tab and start up the array. And now the good thing about the root share is it's only active when it's mounted. So if I click onto mount here, so long as the settings here is toggled onto share, then whenever this is mounted, I'm going to have a root share straight to the heart of my shares. And if I don't want it, I can temporarily disable it by unmounting it. So really awesome. But I'm going to mount it because I want access to it. And I'm going to go back to my main server. And now connect the main server using unassigned devices to that remote share. So I'm going to add a remote SMB share. And there we have the root share. So now I'm going to mount it, click onto the mount point, And now here I am connected to my other server. So if I go into the ISO share here, let's copy a file across from this server onto the main server into this folder here. And so now if I go to shares, ISOs, Mac OS, and here's the file that I just copied over. Now I don't actually want it here, so I'm going to delete it. So both of these plugins are really cool. And now we can actually copy files from one server to another, all in the Unraid GUI. OK, so that's enough looking at plugins. Now let's have a look in Unraid 6.10.0 RC3. Now the first thing I'm going to show you is I'm going to go to settings here and scheduler. And here where we can schedule a parity check. For example, I'm going to put this on monthly. We'll leave it to start on the first day of the month and here the time of day is going to start at midnight. All of this was here before, but now we've got cumulative parity check 
which enables us to split up the parity check into chunks and we can set that to be daily or weekly and for how long the parity check goes on for. So for example, if I set this for nine hours, the parity check would start on the first day of the month at 12 midnight and it would run for nine hours. So it would finish at 9 a.m. And if the parity check hadn't finished in that time, it will run daily at the same time midnight till 9 every day until the parity is finished. So this is really useful to fine tune when you want parity checks to work. Maybe you don't want parity checks to run at all while you're at home. You only want it to run during work hours. You could set that. Or if you just wanted it to run at night like I've done here, you could set it that way too. So it's definitely useful having this feature built in for people with large arrays where the parity check takes a long time. And talking about parity, the actions parity sync and data rebuild, these have been split up as individual actions now. Parity has been added to the history view and now correct calculations for a data rebuild that's less than the size of the parity has been corrected as well. And also something I'm glad to see back is after the parity check's done, you get a done button that you can click on when finished. Okay next, let's just open up a terminal window and let's have a look at this text here. Now if I go down to display settings here, we can change the terminal font size. Obviously by default it's on normal. I'm going to change mine to very large here and click apply. So now when I open up the terminal, we can see the text is much bigger. Now talking about terminal, the way cookies are handled in the web GUI have been changed and this solves an issue with terminal not being able to open in Safari, so that's been fixed now. Okay, there's been a change to how Unraid uses SSL certificates. And to look at that, I'm going to go across to my other server here. And I'm going to go across to settings and then management access. And I'm going to scroll down here. And Unraid's SSL certificates are now wildcard certificates. And to upgrade to the new certificate, you just click on upgrade cert. And that will swap out the legacy certificate for a new wildcard one. Now you can see for me, there's been an error here. I can't connect to the web UI. Now that's because here, if you notice at the end of the address is myunraid.net as opposed to what used to be just unraid.net. So I'm using pfSense, so for me, I have to make a change there. Just as before, on our router, we have to disable DNS rebinding attack protection. And in pfSense, that's done in the DNS resolver here. And if I scroll down to the bottom, you'll see here under the custom options, I've got this private domain listed here, unraid.net. I just need to add another one for my unraid.net. So I'm going to save that and apply the changes. And I'm going to go back here, refresh the page. And now you can see I'm back in. So what would happen if that didn't work and you still couldn't get in? Well, what you can do is you can open up a terminal window on your PC. And we just need to SSH into the server. So for that, I'm going to type SSH root at and then the IP address of the server. And then once SSH in, if you type use underscore SSL space no, and then you can log back in through the normal IP address. OK, so moving on. Now, the way the disks are displayed is slightly different. If we click onto one here, we can see they're split up into these tabs here with settings, self-test, attributes, capability and identity. Now before, that was just in all one long column. Now as well as this, if we have any ButterFS disks in our array, if we click onto that and scroll down, here we can set schedules or schedules, however you want to pronounce it. For a ButterFS balance, this can be set hourly, daily, weekly or monthly. The recommended is monthly. And just like the parity checks, you can choose the day of the month and the time of the day. Now, as well as balance, we can also do the same for scrub as well. And I'm going to set mine here to weekly and let's have that start at 4 a.m. Well, I think that's pretty much all of the main changes in RC3. Now, I'm sure I'm probably forgetting something, but that's what the comments below the video are for. If I've missed anything out you think is important, then please post it below. Now the kernel version in RC3 is 5.15.27 and virtualization libvirt 7.10.0 and we've moved up to QMU 6.2.0. 
and for Docker, we're running version 20.10.9. Okay guys, well I think that's it, so I'm going to leave it there. Now I really hope you found this video useful. If you did, as always, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Now I want to give a big thanks as always to my awesome patrons and supporters. Thank you so much guys for enabling me to make these videos. Without you, I really wouldn't be able to do this. And if there's anyone out there who wants to join that great bunch of people, then please see the links in the description below. Anyway guys, it's time for me to go now, but whatever you're up to for the rest of the day, I hope it's good, and I'll catch you in the next video.